It's been a minute. It has. It's been a long minute. But we've been doing some stuff. Yeah, there's been a did. lot going on. We're you guys got to understand, days. a lot of things have been going on lately. Podcast, the episodes that we've been doing. We've been traveling with Sneaker Con. But please, don't forget that we are still the Early Bird Boys. And I'm going to let you know today, we got a bang. A bang. You ready? We have the 2022 Nike Dunk Low eBay Sandy Bodecker. Sandy Bodecker. Sandy Bodecker. All right. So there's two different pairs that are supposedly in existence, right? Correct. There was one pair that was put up for auction. Um, it was went for between twenty six thousand to thirty thousand. Yeah, I've seen I've seen two different yeah, two uh, different numbers that were seen on the internet. Right. Okay. The other pair, which was the sample that was shown at the auction, was cut into four sections. Boom. And the proceeds to the uh, auction yep. were given to a charity for Tim Brock Foundation, along with skate parts in Portland, Oregon. Yep, Portland, so Oregon. So I thought that was pretty cool how they were able to spread it around and and. Of course, give back to the community of yes. SB while also helping foundations and other people in need. Exactly. Now, the rumor. Yeah, rumor had it. Rumor has it that one in 2008, when Sandy retired, he was gifted one of these pairs. Yep. But from what we've also heard is that he was actually the winner of the auction. Because the person that won the auction lived in Beaverton, Oregon, where Nike headquarters is, where Sandy Bodecker was. So that's up in the air. No one knows for sure what happened. But besides, obviously, if Sandy told anybody, his close friends. Right, know, for but. sure. Rest in peace, Sandy, by yes. the way. The late great. Right. The reason behind the cut up is because of the scarcity of the shoe. They decided to destroy it yeah. by cutting it into four pieces. Crazy. Because they knew in 2003, Whoever the early bird boys were before us, <laughs> if they got their hands on that shoe, it was over. They'd be doing early bird episodes. They'd be doing early bird episodes. But you also were telling me a story. I want to say whenever these started getting leaked, I saw someone went to SneakerCon. I think it was a SneakerCon or maybe it was just another sneaker, sneaker show, show or whatever. Or whatever right. And had a pair that was uncut. Like full? Yeah, full pair. What? So I don't know if like... Does Sandy still have, like, did his pair get sold? Right, or if there was some sort of, like, a, what's it called? A state sale? A state sale. Yeah, like a Where state if it was a part of it. I doubt. Yeah. I strongly doubt I that like... he would get rid of this. This is definitely still in the family. Right. But let's just jump into it. There's a couple different things that you guys need to look at here. One is the clear. Yeah. So it's sectioned off to look like it was destroyed. Right. Like how they did back in the day. The question is, is do you like it? I love this shoe. I like it too. I love this shoe. I think it's very creative. For those of y'all who have seen any of our early bird episodes before, I'm all about themes. SB's all about themes. Some of the themes might not be to my liking, but I think when there's a story behind a shoe, it makes it that much more cool or Especially. Give, gives it that much more of a need to want to yeah. have to be a part of it. I feel like that in shoes has just always been like the thing. Like you always want collabs are cool, but Themes yeah. have always Storyline. been stories and themes run deeper than even collabs do, right. in my opinion. Right. Like, like the fact that there was a shoe that was cut, they remade this shoe, have the clear sections where it looks like it was cut. Like, that's dope. It's cool. Like, man. even if it like does it look weird? Uh yeah, sure. For sure it does. You know I, what think, I, mean? I think the there's there's two two things though that are that. Okay. Hot feet. I was about to say. When you get steamy down there, yep. it's going to start fogging up. Ian put these on the other day, and we tried to record them. Yeah, I wasn't letting him have he it. He wasn't letting us do it, but he was... <laughs> I forgot what we had just he done. Was getting all steamy, willy beaming I think I was, like, I was, like, upstairs, like, I had either just, like, we walked somewhere. And we, I think we went, went to go get coffee. Yeah. So we were walking back, the whole length of the mall, going anywhere, on, and I put them straight on, straight out of the steaming. Travis's, and you can literally see condensation. Inside these little clear areas, you can see condensation that comes off of your feet if your feet get hot so if it's a hot day just know you're gonna have steamy feet man i got this busted fingernail for those of y'all who are seeing this <laughs> what'd you do you hit it with a weight i had a guy hit with a door i tried to close a door from the inside and it pinched tell me tell me why i literally thought the entire time that it was you were like lifting weights and like dropped a dumbbell oh, or something man, on it that'd be even you more pinched painful. the door yeah the door pinched me uh, so yes, yeah, super cool. 
I like how you can still see like the fray yeah. along the side. Like you can tell it's actually like a real raw cut shoe. And the cool part is, is at the bottom, they tried to keep it going by doing the clear soles yeah. through it to make it look more realistic. I love that part as man. well. It's so cool. Like, of course, you know, you're gonna have like quality control right here and whatnot. But I mean, when you're dealing with soles and plastics and rubbers and stuff, it's not gonna be the best condition of being able to get like a perfectly straight line. But the tongue creative. is different. The tongue is different. You have hashtag Nike SB forever. That's different than a traditional uh, SB tongue. You know, it's gonna have that little added hit on this special shoe, as well as on the back, you don't just have you know, Nike or yeah, whatever exactly. it is. You have the SB logo, which Michael was upset with because- It was off-centered. Yeah, the SB yeah, is- Yeah, he thought like, it was a little off-centered right yeah, here, because it, it, but it, it, it lines up perfectly right. because the check starts over here. Yeah. So it's definitely centered, it's just the SB part's not. Now, I do like the original colorways that they used for eBay. So they mm -hmm. kept it with the green, the blue, the yellow, the red, the white. I do think that that's gonna help throw like a lot of cool fits together, but what I'm going to like to see is the sock game. Sock game is going to be crazy. With so these. you can't be coming in here with these musty, dusty socks on. You got to have <laughs> some crispies putting them on. Because if you aren't using bleach in your wash yeah. and you're putting these socks on and you can see they're still, you know how white socks don't ever oh, yeah. become white again after like you wear them once or twice. I feel like white socks this is scary unless you got a brand new one. You got to put a brand new pair in. So sock game's got to be A1 with this one because everybody's going to see it through there. And not only that, but you can if you want spin it off and do cool sock colored patterned coordinations to go with the colors, right. whether it's like blue, all yellow, whatever, to play off of the colors of the I shoe. Yankee did the red socks. I Yankee thought that did. was cool. We did our uh, white and private selection logo socks and everyone in the comments on, I don't remember who posted it, it might've been Nice Kicks. Yeah. Uh, said it looked like we had Chick-fil-A socks Chick on. And then I can't unsee it. It does socks. in fact look like we have Chick-fil-A socks. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Also, they haven't done a clear on a shoe in a while. Uh, Clot Air Maxes. The Clot Air Max and the, the CDG one, right? Dunk High yeah. from like 2017 that was but all Clot clear. Clot would be the black. last one, right? Clot would be the last one. Yeah. And then back in the day, they had the Fantastic Fours, which I have, which is the blue Air Force that's got the clear toe box and mid. And then they did a women's release in a purple version. It's like a like an Easter purple yeah. as well. And I'm on the hunt to find those. Anyone in the comments that knows what shoe I'm talking about in the women's release in purple, I need 11 and a half or 11, please. And I don't care if it's completely uh, like oxidized. Bro, super. Mine's like brown. Yo, get this man the shoe that he needs, please. please. My blue pair, I've never worn them, and the clear is now completely light brown. Like, you can't even see <laughs> through it. Oh, really? It looks like a dirty fish tank. What? Yeah, it's bad. I will say, we haven't talked about this, that it's a mixture of, like, regular smooth leather and patent leather. And patent leather, yeah. yeah. like, all these all these hits all around the, the shoe are all patent leather, with the white being just that regular smooth leather on it. Now, the cool thing is the insole. Yeah, insole. This is... This is where it draws the storyline a little more together because yeah. you have the shoe that's cut up and the reason behind it, and then the man behind yes. the shoes. This is the actual pair that was cut up in my left hand, and then on my right hand is actually Sandy Bodecker um, and his son, the late, great Sandy Bodecker, RIP. Um, so the information that I know about Sandy was he originally didn't work for Nike. He sent, he used to send like report, basically like analysis of runners, what runners would do with different shoes and like how those shoes fared well. Um, and I think he just took a, you know, uh, Phil Knight took a liking to him and ended up bringing him on the team. Um, from there, he worked on the soccer division. Okay. Got the soccer division with Nike going and then pivoted over to Nike skateboarding. He was influential in a lot of the colorways, the Remember when we went to the Heritage Auctions and he was showing us the sea crystals? Yeah, uh, yeah the one, 2004 one, uh, SB high sea crystals. Know, hey, that's one of the ones designed the one. by Sandy like Bodecker. It's a nice, it's a nice they one. They make a low too, I saw it. Really? I was looking them up because I was trying to I was trying to keep my eye on them. Yeah. I wanted one and it was 2016, I think, they dropped the low sea crystal. Still kept SB. his- his Same colorway, right. same colorway. One great thing that Sandy Bodecker was known for, um, and Lance Mountain can attest to this, Eric right. Costin can attest Ooh, to this, okay. was whenever he was pushing um, Nike skateboarding, he wanted to make sure that the 
Nike skateboarding athletes were treated the same as like a basketball player. Football player. All of everybody. them so that they could so earn a living. that's why they call him the God, Godfather of SP then. Exactly. That's why they call him the Godfather of SP. Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. So this is uh, an amazing tribute, an amazing story, you know, to Sandy Bodecker. Um, and these are supposedly, I'm a, this is what I think. I think they're going to take these shoes and I think they're going to do another eBay auction type situation. Well, I've seen 1,500 pairs, yeah. and I saw 6,000. I saw only 8,000 yeah. being produced. Yeah, they, so we they, don't know. They aren't numbered. They're and not usually numbered. Usually, when you get down to a low number like that, the tags usually get a number on it somewhere on the shoe. Which is, which is, that's like the weird part. Is like, there's been a lot of these pairs got out. Yeah, there are. I mean, we um, were the first. But yes, yes, but there a, are a, lot, a lot of these pairs got out. Like I know, I know personally of a, at least 100 pairs that got out. Really? So. I don't know. Like they're not numbered, which is weird to me. If they were gonna be so limited, yeah, and they'd be numbered. Auctioned off, I would have thought they would be numbered, but they're not. So we don't know. Could be a regular release, but as far as everything that we've heard, like this is supposed to be one of Nike's biggest releases. Like um, in as far as exclusive. As far as yes, and okay. like it's a big deal that this this shoe, like the the way this is gonna release is gonna be a big deal. So to me, that screams limited. Okay. Not, not, not your regular, not a regular send to Nike stores or Nike or, uh, not your regular Two send zeros. to, you know, SB accounts. Right. Stuff like that. But, um, I wonder how many different shoelaces are going to come with this. I wonder if they'll do, all, lot, they they do all three they got or all to. four. Yeah. Blue, red, yeah. green, and yellow. Or what if they did one like, uh, remember the unions, the black or the black toe and the blue toe unions, they did the half and half shoelace. What if they did it like pattern? All the way up. Yeah. All the way up. So it's all different colors. Super cool. I'm going to be honest, guys. I really do like this shoe. Yeah. But at the same time, for anyone who's kind of second guessing whether or not, it's just, it's to push your boundaries to try to really figure out how you're going to wear it. Yeah. And that's what I like about it. Yeah. It Not only is it going to push my boundaries to like wear cool socks or throw a cool fit on, but at the same time, people are going to look at that shoe when you're wearing it and be like, like what is that? Like, yeah. yo. And then it's, it's like a, a, a conversation starter as I, well. I, Speaking of conversation starters, I can't wait for us to rock these and pull up to the eBay booth. Yeah. Hey, can you legit check these? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that in the Dallas Sneaker Con because yeah. uh, we're going to be wearing these for Dallas Sneaker Con. For sure. That's for sure. Um, guys, down below, please, I want to know if you're rocking with them, why or why not. And secondly, how are you going to rock them? We're going to put white socks, colored socks. Like, what's the fit going to really look like? And at the end of the day, man, uh, Rest in peace, Sandy Bodecker, yes. man. I, at the end of the day, I feel like it's hard to create a shoe for a sport for something that wasn't really there yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, skateboarding's huge now, but back then, you know, in the early 2000s, when yeah. they first created it, was still it was still on the rise. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's a beautiful thing that it's still here. And I think it's really cool that eBay actually went back and, and paid homage to the godfather of the sbs godfather so, of sbs that's another early bird episode for you guys man and we are out